What's up guys? Welcome back to the Classic Car Maintenance Channel. In today's video, we'll show you how to polish your car with a car polisher. In our previous videos, we've washed our car, removed the iron particles, and clayed it. Now that the car paint is clean and contaminant free, it's time to remove the scratches and marring to get a deep showroom gloss. Don't forget, if you want to get polishing results like a pro, preparation is key. If you don't clean your car surface meticulously first, surface contaminants will get stuck to your polishing pad and scratch your car paint and you'll end up with more scratches instead of less. That's where most DIY polishing jobs go wrong. Contrary to what you might think, good preparation actually saves time, because you'll only have to polish once. If you try to cut corners, you'll end up chasing your own tail, removing those scratches and marring you've caused by polishing over a dirty surface. If you haven't done it already before clay barring your car, now is the time to measure your car's paint thickness. To not run the risk of polishing through your clear coat, you want to first check your car's paint thickness. You can use a mechanical or a digital paint gauge like we've used in our previous video on how to clay bar your car. If you have a reasonably new car or your paint measures around 100 microns or more, you should be fine. But if your car's paint thickness is below 80 to 90 microns, you want to use your DA polisher at low RPM only and apply very light pressure. If you don't want to take any risks with your thin paint, only gently polish your car by hand and use fine-grade polishing pads and liquids. No car is the same, so this is just an indication, a general guideline. Use common sense. When in doubt, have an expert assess your car's paint condition first. Right. Now you know that your paint is thick enough to start the polishing process. First park your car in the shade, away from trees. It's not a good idea to park your car under trees when you're detailing. There's always stuff falling from trees like tree sap, honeydew, dead foliage, bird droppings. If this stuff accidentally gets caught in your polishing pad while you're working, it will scratch your car paint. You don't want to correct your car paint in direct sunlight on a warm summer's day because the heat from direct sun softens your car paint in summer, making it more prone to abrasion and scratches. Intense sunlight will also evaporate your product before you can work it, potentially leaving marks and spots. However, if the sun is too weak to heat your car paint, you should be okay. Gently touch the car surface to make sure it isn't hot and use common sense. If you don't have a place in the shade, you want to detail your car on an overcast day or early in the morning when it's cool. If you have access to a large enclosed garage with good lighting, it's best to park it there for the actual polishing phase. Indoors, you have almost 100% control of your surroundings, which is a huge bonus. There's no wind blowing stuff on your immaculately clean car surface and there's no bugs and birds doing their thing. Now that our car is free of contaminants and parked in the right spot, let's gather the stuff we'll need to polish our car with a polisher. First of all, you're going to need the softest edgeless towels you can get because you don't want to scratch your freshly polished paint. For an average car size like ours, six towels should do. You want to wear nitrile gloves to avoid skin contact. Remember, the products we're going to use are formulated for car care, not skin care. Of course, you'll need polishing products. Depending on the roughness of your paint and depth of the scratches and marring, you can use a fine, medium, or coarse polishing liquid. For our car, we'll be using a coarse grade polish to remove the deepest scratches and then we'll finish with a fine finishing polish to achieve that perfect shine. To apply these polishes, we're going to use three different polishers, each with a coarse grade polishing pad and a fine grade pad. You don't actually need three different polishers to get the job done. It just makes this job faster, easier, and more convenient. We'll use the large DA polisher on the left for large surfaces like the hood and doors. The red compact battery powered polisher we're going to use in places where the large DA would be very clumsy to handle. We'll also use a medium sized polisher with extensions and a pen style adapter piece with tiny pads that will enable us to get in all nooks and crannies without having to polish by hand. You'll also need a conditioning brush to brush off caked up product from your pads while you're polishing and some painter's tape to mask areas that aren't supposed to be polished like matte rubber or unpainted plastic trim. You can find all these products in the links below. We're going to tackle the scratches and swirl marks on our car with coarse polish to start with and then finish with fine finishing polish to get a showroom gloss. You can clearly see this car needs it. And that's no surprise, it hasn't been polished in over 20 years. 
However, when your car paint is in good shape, you want to start with a soft foam pad combined with fine grade polish and evaluate the results as you go. You can always switch to medium or coarse polish if it takes too much effort to remove the scratches. It's always smart to start with a fine or medium polish and use a more aggressive one only if needed. The less paint you remove in the process, the better, because it doesn't grow back. All right, put on some gloves and you're ready to go. Let's do this. Put all your stuff within arm's reach for easy access. Because we're doing the hood first, we put everything we're gonna need within reach on a foam rubber mat located in the center of the hood. You don't wanna put your product straight on your car paint because that might scratch it. The first thing we're gonna do is take our large double action polisher with a coarse polishing pad and saturate it with six to eight pea-sized dots of coarse polish. You wanna spread the polish evenly to saturate the entire pad surface with product because a dry pad will cause marring. We're gonna start by polishing the surface with coarse polish at medium speed in single up and down passes in straight lines. By working in straight lines instead of swirling motions, you'll avoid making swirl marks. Always work medium to small size areas at a time so the polish doesn't dry on you while you're working it. You want each pass to overlap the previous by at least 50%. Apply moderate pressure. After you've completed the up and down polishing pattern from left to right, now repeat the same procedure but from right to left. Without letting the polish dry, you want to immediately proceed with a side to side pattern and work your way down. Again, Overlap each previous pass by at least 50%, apply moderate pressure, and repeat the same procedure working your way up. Next, take a super soft edgeless microfiber towel and fold it twice. Now wipe off the polish in straight lines until there's none left. You want to flip it to a fresh side each time it's saturated. If you fold it twice, you'll be able to flip it to a fresh side eight times. Again, work the area in both side-to-side -side motion and up and down to remove any residue. Now carefully check the polished surface for scratches and swirls. Depending on the state your car paint is in, it may need another pass. If all major scratches and blemishes are gone after one pass, you can move on to an adjacent area right away. When you move on to an adjacent area, make sure to overlap the previous area by a couple of inches to make all areas blend in nicely. It's the same process over and over again. Once you get the hang of it, it's quite simple actually side to side and up and down in straight lines and then wipe the residue off in a crosshatch pattern with a soft clean towel. Although it's possible to polish smaller areas like the side of the hood bulge with a full-size polisher, it's much easier and more precise to use a medium polisher for the job. This type of lightweight battery-powered polisher is also less tiring to use for a large polishing job. It won't cramp your muscles as fast as a full-blown one. When you're done polishing, wipe the surface with a soft, clean towel in straight lines. The next and final step for us will be to repeat the whole process but with a soft pad and fine finishing polish to get a deep showroom shine. If your car paint was in good shape to begin with and you've started with a soft pad and fine grade finishing polish right away, you can skip this step of course. You might want to watch the process one more time as a recap though because it's the exact same process but with a different pad and product. We'll speed it up so you can clearly see the pattern. Saturate the pad with product. Work the area side to side and up and down in a crosshatch pattern. Wipe clean in a straight crosshatch pattern and you're done.
For hard to reach spots and small areas, we like using a precision polisher with a small pad. It can be used with extension rods for a long reach or with a flexible shaft attachment with a pen-shaped end. This pen-shaped end is very easy to hold and maneuver around difficult to get to areas like logos, lettering, or rubber parts. That's the attachment we'll be using today. You want to first tape off stuff you'll come close to with your polishing pad, but you don't want to polish like rubber and uncoated plastic parts. Because the pad is so small, it's best to put a drop of polishing product next to the spot you're going to polish and simply dip the pad in the polish whenever it needs to be replenished. You'll notice right away that it's hard not to sling product with these tiny pads, but that's okay, no harm done. These tiny droplets can easily be wiped off after you're done polishing very small or difficult to get to areas like around logos, lettering or rubber parts may have to be polished following the contours instead of straight lines. That's just fine. Switch to straight lines where you can. Just like when using a full size or medium car polisher, you want to lift the polishing process to a higher level by using fine finishing polish to remove the tiny marring that coarse polish couldn't. Using fine finishing polish after scratch removal is the only way to achieve that awesome deep showroom gloss. Once you've polished your whole car using a polisher or a combination of different types of polishers like we did, you want to inspect your entire paint surface one more time in good light and to make sure no spot is left unpolished and everything blends in as it should. Well, I guess the results speak for themselves, don't they? Remember, there's always room for improvement no matter what you do, but we're pretty happy with the way our old, tired car paint is revived with affordable equipment. Some polish, old-fashioned elbow grease, and the right technique. Nope, no scratches or marring anymore. Looks awesome. Approved.